barbarian old king finger to his sword. My woman is a whore. His burden quietly lessened. There are plenty others where she should follow. Be they young now, tomorrow, what would it matter? He scoffed his contempt. It is a bitch that is barren of sons in any case, and look deeper into the sword. His edge is unlike any other weapon. A sort of harlot would not now bow before my pulsating aggression, the girth of my sincerest depression, my unkindest expression, the exploding of my finest transgression. He was bored. What a dull lot of creatures. What a stinking waste. A sulfurous element. Play the edge you give to me. What a teary-eyed gift to infiltrate my thoughts. And he looked deeper. I see your trickery, magician, but I should not be barbarian any more. I share no lusts with my horde. I care not for women, nor men whose doll is nothing but the breath of some horny dog that pitifully it begs with its fever of expectation. What have you done, wizard, that I have become something more? Seven weeks and I have not slept. Seven weeks and cried I like a babe, like a howling ghost, lost and alone. Where am I now, wizard? Where shall I go? Only by the throbbing of my sword, that scintillating, that bleary-eyed singular obsession. There you go, barbarian warlord, like quicksand and suffocation, like the damning of your every newborn, like the demon wizard's indiscretion. There you must follow, and not for any whore. For what is a whore but some bitch interchangeable? As she enters heat and grows hot of breeding, as she has no thoughts, only incessant feeding, and whining and misbehaving, as though you are not the overlord, as though this bitch is your master, your forever. I could not look at her much longer lest I hack her limbs from her and feed her to her kindred dog, her kindred breeder, if she is sterile bitch and always was. I hate you, wizard, and I love what you have done, this beyond living, this forever long. I will cleave the head of your disbeliever, and afterwards might I cleave your head, might the urge be so strong. The god musician struck a chord. Here is what I name civil war, for the seducing of every witch, to which they must all accord this same principle, to each the other they must resemble, in temper something of a discord that shall fill the ears of every wizard. I already know this whore, and this is how she goeth. And describe to him that of this witch he bound to him, something which his heart must scorn, and describe to him, god musician, with the strumming of thy chords, every foul act that is the nature of women, until it cannot help but fill his thoughts. And what a proud creature now for a wizard that wedlocked himself to this, so he must follow foul superstition, that wherever he goeth the whole mark of her remembrance must follow and all laugh at him, the sacrifice he make in some vain gesture of love, this tempest that he keep that oft remarked, did swallow or something such, for who could know, when every witch is this witch, and for herself the agency we deliver her in this paranoia, for when she protests, makes a future deceit out of a protest, and then... So questions the plural wizard, what is deceit or my own conceit, that I no longer trust whether I anticipate for every eventuality, and so cripple him with self-defeat and obsessive anxiety? He will not be able to leave it alone, and so must ponder he, a wizard that, in war, so exposed himself to the casting of this stone, and shared he the wizard's smoke. And you will say to him, god musician, that this plural wizard, Platuton is named he, and the witch, all shall know it. And as for myself, you cannot sire an empress, Pertuchon, a challenge he must so answer for the pride of a wizard, a thing never done, and then should this further cripple him, for now only two of his family for his scorn, that humiliate him in this way of which, as we have foretold, that each girl will turn to another with her eyes aglow and marvel at this creed which all swore was the best enjoyment ever, enjoyment forevermore. I met a girl one night, Rebecca, as she danced by firelight like some undeciphered nature that I once ago forgot, that returns to me now as though I knew it all along, a perfect sequence in nature as though she and I belonged to something much greater, that I recognised the parchment of my future before it ever had begun. And why Rebecca, though her dancing it was clever and she was closely watched, like some promise of a riddle which nobody had unlocked, 
and all around me the quiet hubbub of conversation as though these old familiar phrases as though they had only now been spoken and not spoken before but forgot what is this dream you weave rebecca that you stitch together these people like your rhythm you drive along do you even realize rebecca the fulcrum of your assertion that in this moment is a one which always was and why rebecca why must i stand apart like a tormented disbeliever some cynic that you peel his eyes apart and say to him Look, your future doth unwind, but I would have it not. I search deep within my mind, that I wonder how I pull this trick apart, that I fulfil some long-told quest, that these ideas that explode from my breast are not ones which always was, but that they have been, and so I revolved, like you revolved, Rebecca, in accordance to that song. And so I name thee Rebecca, Rebecca the Empress of this song, Rebecca the Undeciphered, Rebecca to the Night Belong, this night unlike any other, when something went wrong. When our imagination was evolved, it takes its place now as something which always was, but all remind themselves exactly of that time which never was, shouldn't have been but truly was, for we all saw Rebecca, we all saw her as she truly was, that she was like no other, none that had ever been, because of her dancing, it was a dance that always was. From Dreams, Ixion. Yes, child, yes, now you start to see. Allow this truth to breed and hearken to me, the awakening which you do not see folly. Here I give to further thyself, not the thing you did, prince of dreams, what you undid, and they did not know it, and so recurs to thee, you that did it, child of prophecy, scion of destiny, the overman's unborn progeny that no war shall see. For I promise this, I, Ichthion, the god of all wizards, the war marshal, the soldier's misery that disquiet his sleep, where I allow Malabolgia to creep in penance for what this man did, the price I extract for every rape, every murdering, every bystander that did nothing, that had not the heart to admonish, this is wrong, so took no part in it, only hid quietly amidst the throng, silently prayed for no stray bullet, and in so doing, invited the reaper in, that this coward who has no fear of living in him, Gets no respite in his un intermittent unliving, his disgrace how malabolgia he feeds, grows fat though it hurt him, the demon wizard to live this ache, this fever, this melancholy, that his turmoil is in the anguish of innocence, for he cannot take their wailing, all he wishes is that they should sleep, so he too can once again sleep, that the hurtful fidget of those molested, those tiny be they blown away feet, that they no longer question him, malabol, for why did you do it? and for him to weep, as he has not wept in as much time as he has not slept. And as for me, I do not fear, for she gave me an eternity, this witch, and then must play to the cobalt. Do you not see when the cobalt, he subjected the order of time on thee, in the creating of that clock he did before speak? You are angry with me. There was silence. Yeah, you are angry. Only more deliberate and protracted this time. You're remarkable, you know that. Who ever heard of an honest witch? And whose fault is that? You know, you're only more distracted when you pout like that. And she caved a little, for he paid no compliments easily, and she enjoyed when he loved her, though confounded her that she loved him back. It's only a small deceit in any case, and necessary, I feel, when there is too much prudence in wisdom, and the ire of wizards has not been felt over long. This ivory war champion, this general overdragon, he must underestimate the task ahead of him. No man has ever bested this god dragon, and it is uncertain whether any could. Do you not remember the tale I told to you, of the invulnerable man? Only that in the workings of this god dragon is a certain sense of irony. Instead of removing that godless champion from the land, instead contained him inside of it, there to live his invulnerable lifetime, the ill fate of a man who could not even end himself. A fable every warlock should make remark of, lest he deceive himself that his life is always better than his death. And he pulled her closer to him, and she caught not her smile before it broke on her face. There, you see, your smiling is always gladder to my heart, and hard times we have ahead of us, life, mother. Plenty of time for your scowling yet. These wizards have suffered long for the knowledge they keep. The wizard is slow for change, and long ago were the days when a fair face brought about easiness in him. The world is changing, and with it, the relics of old, lest their lesson be lost on we. The righteous are easily boring, are they not? What have they lived, these silly old men, so you think? Only everything that is possible to live, and many things it is not. For a wizard's living is a difficult one, and not for the weak of heart. Many lesser men have died in vain of this tutelage. And 
You're not rich has learned such lessons, that your folly in living is when it is misspent, that you ran to your conclusion with no mind of your living. Why this invulnerable man, no terror of an eternal misery? Like men often do, he got ahead of himself. There was no warning that he would heed. The only admonishment he ever broke was in the commiserating of his mistakes. He had no accounting of his weakness for. He was invulnerable, you see. And so he believed. 